Coaches Show. I'm Darren Joins, Williamson County Schools Athletic Director. Excited to talk about tonight's District 10 4A matchup. For the second time, it's our game of the week. Shows you what a big deal it is, coaches. Glad to have Coach Tony Hill from Independence back. Coach Rachel Shaw from Franklin back. Thanks for coming back. Thank you. Thanks, man. Uh, game, as we said, is the feature game for the second time this year. January 10th, you matched up at Franklin. The Franklin girls defeated Independence 57-46. We'll start with Coach Shaw. That was a good win for your team on the 10th. And then you had another, what I would call, kind of a breakthrough sort of signature win over Owensville on Tuesday. Yeah, no, our energy has been great the last couple um, weeks playing. We know our assignment's going in. The energy has been consistent. Like we say, it's hard to constantly produce energy, especially with these games back-to-back. Um, so as long as we stay focused, we do our job, we'll be ready to take care of business. Coach Hill, your team has really played well at times. When, I, when you look at your scores against some of the top teams in the league, I think about that game with Brentwood. And we all – I mean, I'm not telling you guys to think this, but I think Brentwood's the favorite uh, in terms of the league. They've got a lot of people back off a team that went really deep last year. And then you played pretty darn well defensively against Page too. So – you got to be happy with your team, at least on the defensive side. Yeah, you know, we're, we're playing people close. Uh, we're competing. Um, you know, it seems like just every night out there's a different thing that kind of uh, uh, gets us. You know, last night was uh, was defensive rebounding. We didn't, didn't rebound well uh, and then didn't make our free throws well. Or that thing would have been a lot closer than, than uh, the 14-point spread that it was against Page. Um, and, and we did play Brentwood tough. Um, but uh, you know we're ready to we're we're ready to beat somebody we shouldn't so to speak and uh, certainly uh, kids playing hard um, kids definitely bought into what we're trying to get done and and the effort is there um, we just need to get over the hump and and beat somebody that maybe we shouldn't and hopefully that'll get us over the hump for the rest of the year. Coach Shaw, let's talk a little bit more about that game on Tuesday against Nowensville. It was only, at that time, their second loss of the season in league play. Uh, that was senior night, too, right? It was. Did that give you some energy, the senior night? Thing? It did. It was a mix of emotions because, um, mm -hmm. you know, we talk about it being senior night. Um, but, thankfully, it wasn't their last home game. I know we've kind of – the traditional senior night last home game on your court. Um, so, we kind of gotten away with that just a little bit. Uh, so, I think that helped us and our seniors not have that ultimate pressure of, oh, this is it. This is the last moment. Um, but we had six seniors. We were able to get all of them in in the first uh, first quarter. Um, of course, couldn't start them all. I wasn't going to risk a technical <laughs> against a hard Nolansville team right off the bat. Um, so I think that helped, especially with the energy and the fans. Of course, the atmosphere is electric always at Franklin. Um, so, yeah, then just, again, knowing the job, knowing the assignment, playing well defense, knocking down shots when we need to. Um, and then everyone that stepped on the court did their job. Coach uh, Shaw, we talk a lot about your sophomore, Cecily Brandemore, and we should, mm -hmm. and Amy Elliott, your senior, and we should. Uh, but Anna Walton is someone who's really stepped up for your team as of late. And going back to that game against Noah's, we had three players in double figures, all three of those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, um, Amy, I think, had a, a finally a breakout moment where she had a season high so far for her. Uh, Cecily was dominant on the boards doing um, and getting some quick buckets around the blocks and then having Anna Walton step up. Um, she is a great defensive player, just a hard-nosed player, and we're going to put her on the best player just to, you know, get some uh, turnovers or just distraction or make that player work harder. But to have her find that offensive side this last game was amazing. Um, we've been talking about being strong and ripping the ball and driving and having a good little short corner or a jumper. Um, and she was able to capitalize last night. And it was it was big for our team and big for her. Coach Shaw, and I'm going to ask Coach Hill the same thing here in just a second. Three scoring threats on offense. I've always thought for high school teams, if you can have three players in double figures consistently, it makes you sort of tough to guard. Oh, yeah, 100%. Because um, it's not just focusing on one player, like you were saying. Uh, the fact that we could spread the ball around and at any given point, one of those three, or hopefully we can uh, punch in a few other points from Emma Powell or Josie Hammond, just makes it harder to guard. And Coach Hill, I think in high school, it's rare that you consistently have three. You know, it really is. Uh, getting kids to come out night in, night out, and give that same level of point production is challenging because, um, you know, 
one night, you know, we, we'll have a kid one night get 20, and the next night that kid gets two. So if we could just keep the consistency there, it yeah. sure would be nice. Coach, in your team, uh, when I watch you play, I know you talk about defense a lot. I feel like in watching you a couple times, your defense looks pretty darn good. I've heard you say this. I hope you don't mind me saying this mm -hmm. on the air. Uh, you've said offensively, when we're good, we're good. But when we're bad, it's bad. Well, you know, we're good when we get up and down. Um, you know, I, I really think that that's when we are at our best. And um, you got to shoot it well, certainly. If you're going to beat anybody, you're going to score a lot of points. And, uh, you know, I, I like to get points maybe uh, out of our defense. Maybe the defense creates some baskets that we uh, don't have to get in our half-court defensive set. And if we can do that, I think, you know, 50 has kind of been our magic number. If, if we've got to 50, then we've had a pretty good chance to win or been pretty close. And uh, uh, if we can do that, I like our, our chances. Coach, your game uh, at Centennial, and, and listen, I think Centennial's a pretty darn good team. I mean, they've got a couple of kids who can score. You're playing that game, you're down eight or ten at the half. And when you come out the second half, first of all, your defense was unbelievable. You talked about that night how you just said, hey, y'all figure it out. Let the leadership kind of take that over. And then when you came out, the defense was wonderful. Aaliyah Fleming may have had the best half I've seen a player have this year. Unreal. Well, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I'm sorry. Yeah, you know, at the half, I was so frustrated. I, I just said, look, guys, when you hear that three-minute horn, uh, come on out. Leadership of this team, be figuring this out. And uh, my staff and I just walked out, and we just stood in the hallway. And sure enough, when the, when the horn sounded, uh, our kids came out, and it was just a different basketball team. The urgency and the intensity was just far greater. Uh, led by Aaliyah Fleming, I think she had 20, maybe 21 over 25, maybe, I think, in the second half, if that's right. Um, her energy was just uh, contagious. And, and I tell you, our cheering section uh, was behind our bench, and I challenged those guys. Hey, get in the ball game, let's go. And, and I think that gave us some energy as well. No doubt. Uh, Maddie Zeitz doesn't play like a freshman. Anytime you see she's kind of cool-headed, every game getting better. She is, and, and it's hard to believe she is just a freshman. And I think that her ceiling is so high. Uh, the more experience she gets at the varsity level, uh, and obviously at the at the 4A level, and this is high-level basketball, and – uh, the more experience she gets at that level, the better she will get. Uh, we got to work on some consistency with her, um, you know, production being the same each night out, uh, both from a rebounding and from a, a point production perspective. But, you know, defensively, she's so long. Uh, she's so athletic. She can move. She can block shots. Uh, she really presents a lot of problems from that standpoint for other teams as well. Let's talk about the district standings. And, again, uh, every week when you take a look, it's uh, there's not a lot decided, really. <laughs> Centennial has been at the bottom. It'll take a little bit for them to get out of that spot. But you look at the top, uh, Page, Brentwood, and Owensville have been up there. And then you're talking about the middle, what I'm calling the middle, is really close. And if you take a look at your schedules, too, because we had the weather, you didn't play everybody in order. So that's really made it cloudier, so to speak, too. So, Coach Shaw, when I look at this, there's still a lot to play for in terms of seeding. Who knows what's going to happen? Oh, 100%. I mean, that's we've been telling the girls that it's anyone's game, um, especially when we had that big win against Nolansville on Tuesday earlier in the week. It just shows that we can compete with anyone. Uh, um, and then the snow day makeups. Um, I know we got the Independence game tonight, and then we play the following week. We play Summit and then Centennial back-to-back. So our goal is to win out, win out the rest of this uh, rest of the rest of this week and then next week, and then finish up with Paige. And I think again, it's anyone's ball game. Just because they are leading the district uh, right now, it doesn't mean that they're going to finish that way. Coach Hill, uh, when you look at your schedule, and I know you don't look too far ahead, but only one game left, and Franklin can say the same thing against the top three. So because of that you kind of control your own destiny. Yeah, we sure do. Um, you know, we put our schedule on the board after the game last night, and, and uh, you know, we feel like we do control our own destiny. Um, 
you know, we've played, uh, you know, Brentwood twice, uh, no one's, no, no one's built this once, Page twice. Um, so we do have, um, we're kind of staying away from the one and the two here uh, going forward. So, you know, we're excited about the opportunity. Um, if, if we'll play well, uh, we certainly like our chances to get up in the middle of the pack of the district. But, uh, you know, like Coach Shaw said, you know, it's been proven this year that a given night, anybody can beat anybody. Mm -hmm. So um, nothing's a sure thing for sure. Uh, let's uh, – I want to ask both of you this. Start with Coach Shaw. Obviously, if you're in the top four, getting to play at home is great. Right. Everybody wants that. Mm -hmm. We want to play at home. But forgetting that part of it, it seems to me – and this is, I think, the case every year, but it really seems this way this year. It's sort of the matchup. There's a possibility you could play a higher seed and it'd be better for you based on who it is. Oh, 100%. Especially with, like you said, everyone's schedule towards the end of this uh, couple weeks are kind of messed up with the snow days. Um, a lot can still change in a short amount of time. So, again, you're shooting for if you can't get up to the top one just based off how we've played so far in this district, number four, so that way you can host that game of the first round. If not, you're trying to be, you know, right behind them, five, six, wherever, so your matchups are ideal. Um, but, yeah, it's it can go either way, and that's scary but fun at the same time because it's always a new challenge. Um, so all we can do right now is just focus on ourselves, win the next game at hand, um, and then just take it in stride till the end of the season. Coach Hill, and I'm not necessarily speaking for your team here, but uh, I think seven and eight would be like, well, that may not be great. But there's a possibility a team could be sixth, and based on the matchup, it's better off than being fifth. Oh, no doubt about it. You know, basketball is one of those sports that matchups are so important. You know, if, if uh, it, it, you know, in our situation, well, you know, we've got a, a pretty good post. You know, if we don't have a guard for that kid uh, on the other end of the defensive end of the floor, then that's a problem. Um, and, and if you don't have a post and, and the team you're playing has a good post like Coach Shaw does, um, that can be a major matchup problem for whoever she's playing. So mm -hmm. matchups are so important in the game uh, and can – you know, not sometimes the better team doesn't even win as a result of just a bad matchup. No doubt about that. You've seen it for years. All right, let's finish up talking about tonight's game. Coach Shaw again on January 10th. You get a home win, 57-46. What do you need to do tonight to duplicate that? Um, definitely control the ball, control the pace, control the tempo. Um, we've been talking about the team that has the ball has got the power. Um, so – not letting their defense uh, speed us up or mess up into quick turnovers where they can capitalize in the transition buckets. Um, taking care of Fleming's, not letting her drive in. And then what helped us last time was Savannah C got in foul trouble. Um, so if we can just contain, you know, take advantage of the times when the, the key players are out, um, just keep looking to pound it inside. Coach Hill in that last game, especially during the first half, even. They had that little stretch where they scored and you didn't, and a lot of it was Brandamore. Right. What do you need to do to stop her, slow her down, and make sure you reverse that result? Well, she had 29, uh, I think 14 and five blocks, somewhere in that neighborhood uh, against us last, uh, last time out. Um, you know, we got to figure out a way to, to make sure we keep her off the glass. Um, I think we got to make sure we, 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 put her in a position where she's not comfortable uh, in the lane and around the lane. Um, she's so effective there. I mean, she's so long, so athletic. Uh, she can come out on the floor and guard you if you need, if she needs to. So we definitely have our work cut out for us. Well, we're looking forward to it again. Tonight's game, the WCTV game of the week, Franklin's going to travel to Independence. Thank you guys for being here. Definitely appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Coach. Thank you for joining us for the Coaches Show, the first segment with the girls. We'll be right back to talk to the boys coaches. Welcome back to the Coaches Show. I'm Darren Joins, Williamson County Schools Athletic Director. We're talking about a big matchup in District 10 4A, Franklin traveling to Independence. we got the boys coaches here for this segment, Coach Mark Wilkins of Independence, Coach Jason Tiger to Franklin. Gentlemen, thanks for being here again for this matchup. Yeah, appreciate, appreciate it. it sir. Thank you. Uh, back on January 10th, this was a battle of unbeatens at the time. Lots happened since then in a short period of time. 
Franklin with the 73-65 win. Let me start with Coach Tiger. First of all, Coach, congratulations on win 300. And listen, I know you're not going to say it, but as the former Franklin coach, could it be any sweeter than to get it over the traditional rival, Brentwood, on the road? No, I'll say it. I'm very, <laughs> very, very happy to get a win. Uh, at Brentwood, any time we can do it, we're happy. <laughs> Uh, it was, uh, it was, I, I didn't realize coach Anderson does a good job keeping up with all that kind of stuff. And the guys surprised me in the locker room afterwards. So it was a special evening, um, uh, to get a quality win against a, a, a quality op opponent. Well, and I appreciate coach Anderson and I, something I talked to the ADs about and even the coaches, Hey, if there's something coming up, like a, a win that matters and in basketball, I think we all talk about the, on the hundreds, so to speak, uh, you should be recognized. Heck, you get a hard time enough from those people out there critiquing and watching you, and, but that's, that's something to be proud of, 300 wins, Coach. No, thank you. Uh, coach Wilkins, here's what I – and I'm going to ask Coach Tiger a similar question here in just a second. I think you've had a target on you all this year. You know, you know runner-up last year, several guys back. Obviously, you lost a couple of key pieces, uh, uh, Witt and Owens from your team last year. But your team, you got these expectations, you've got internal expectations. You go through one stretch, you lose a couple in a row, three out of four, which can happen in this league at any time. Right. Uh, did you have to convince your team a little bit, like, hey, fellas, this, this sky's not falling here. We've played 30 games, right. hopefully 40 games. It's okay. Yeah, we did. I mean, honestly, we, we've been very fortunate that even last year, some of those really tight district games that we had, we were still able to find a way to win a lot of those. And so, you know, here we are. Yeah, lost three out of four. I actually had a reporter email me and say, is anybody sick or ineligible or hurt? <laughs> and I'd reply back, no, we play in a great district, you know? And uh, and so, but that is, you know, kind of, the, I guess, the expectation is that since we had such a great year last year that all of a sudden we're just going to be able to breeze through this. And, and now it's a matter of we, can we win it again or can we get there again? And we know that couldn't be further from the truth. We have so many hurdles ahead of us. And, you know, 99 out, that's been, you know, uh, been the case for us. So, yeah, we've had a couple times, you know, get together and say, hey, look, it's okay. You know, we're okay. Let's keep going. And, you know, it's, it's a marathon, not a race. And so we've had to make some adjustments. And, and our kids continue just to believe. And, and thankfully, uh, I think we're on the right track again. <clears throat> Coach Tiger, uh, we talked about when y'all matched up January 10th. It was a great game, by the way. I was there. Crowds were great. Uh, I think two of the best student sections night in and night out when you guys match up. You get that win. Uh, when the dust settles, you still could be the top two teams. A lot to play still, but you could be. Oh, without question. And, uh, you know, the thing is, I don't know how much that means in the league. Uh, yeah. as, as good as it is from, from one to eight, yeah, sure, you get a home game. And you get, you know, some bragging rights while – you know, winning a, a regular season title, I guess. Uh, but at the end of the day, no one is going to feel good in the opening round of uh, the district tournament. So, um, sure, we're going to try to win them all. I mean, no doubt about it. We would love to, to, to win a district title. But, um, you know, it doesn't do anything for you this year, really, in the opening round. Well, and we talk about this uh – Coach Wilkins, we can talk about top two, and you guys will be in the conversation, but so will Ravenwood and Centennial, and no one's has been playing better. So, uh, And then you, how would you like to look up and be two or three? I'm not saying this is how it's going to finish, but, yeah. hey, Independence, good job. You finished second. Now you're taking on Brentwood. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you got to deal with Daniel Cochran in the first <laughs> round. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Uh, obviously, that's a team that, that knocked you off earlier. So it does kind of yeah. depend on where you fall. No, it does. When you go talking to actually a couple other coaches in the district, that we kind of came to that conclusion that home would be nice, but matchups matter more. And I don't even know what matchup that is really still for us. And and that's what's unique about obviously with our situation with the snow too. That even though we're seven or eight games in, we still don't really know how everyone's doing across the board. We won't know till the last week, really. You know, and so um, it, it's it really I think this year matters way more about how you're playing. You know, as an individual team. Um, even more than your opponent. And so sure enough, those things that we think that are so important uh, to give you that advantage of that game because it's, you know, basketball is a tournament sport. You're hoping you're playing your best basketball when that Thursday comes around. And so you um, just got to stay focused on us. I'm, and I, I'm definitely okay that you guys did it. Y'all had every right to do it where you decided as a league, top four are going to host, let's at least get some kind of advantage. But as a – I'm a fan of this stuff. I mean, obviously I'm a district AD, but I'm, I love watching these games and figuring it out and – 
Coach Tired, I would love it if it was at one site. Oh, <laughs> well, we agree with that. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, love the one great. side as well. I mean, I've I've always been a fan of, uh, of tournament basketball and in that environment, and so. But you know, the way it is, it was decided to be a home satellite, and so we're hoping we'll be in that top four and get to host one. Well, and coach, well, because I, uh, our ba our football coaches here, I think get along unusually well. They were, you know, he was on his staff, and then he was on his staff. But I'm telling you, I've seen with basketball, it's getting, it seems to be getting tighter and tighter. And I think a lot of it is we're in the same league again. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think that obviously we're all extremely competitive and want to beat each other. But there's no, you know, ill will, talking to each other before the games, talking about the league. You know, those are some of – because if there's anybody that understands what you're going through, it's the guy that you're getting ready to compete against. You know, the stress and the preparation and the hopes and the excitement. So I think we'd be, you know, uh, remiss not to at least talk to each other and be cordial, and that's, you know, been the case. And, and thankfully enough of us have done it in, long enough now that – there's no, it doesn't give you an advantage to be a jerk. You know, you can still talk to each other. Um, and so that's kind of been the, you know, as, as I've been able to be in here now three years, I've, I've felt that. You know, definitely want to win and everybody wants to win this playing you, but it's nothing, you know, more than that, just competitive. <clears throat> Let's talk, uh, Coach Tiger. Uh, sort of the same question I had for Coach Wilkins. <clears throat> you come out and win the first seven games in the league. I think you and any other coach would have said, hey, uh, we're going to have you win the first seven. But then you're going to drop a game at home to a team at that time that's five or six, would you take it? And everybody would be signing up for that. Is it one of those things? Sometimes when you win so much, you win seven in a row, the team might react like it's worse than it really is. It's one game. Well, I think we've got a pretty level-minded team. Uh, there wasn't a lot of panic um, from the Nolensville game. Um, and, um, uh, you know, we didn't play well. We didn't play well. They played well. Uh, had an outstanding um, uh, game plan, and uh, uh, it just went our night. And so, like you said, I mean, if you say that you're going to win your first seven and then drop one, you know, most co coaches in this league would have taken that on yeah. the front end uh, for sure. So uh, we got to learn from it and, and move on. And, Coach, and I don't even want you to answer it. I'm just going to float this. I look at that and think that's one of those matchup things. Mm -hmm. You go to no one'sville, you win by four. Uh, at home, you lose by 13. That may be one that matchup-wise, for whatever reason, might be a little awkward or different for your team. Again, it's just me being me. Uh, Coach Tiger, uh, Davis Long, Christian Brown. We talk about them all the time, and we should. Let's talk a little bit about some of those role players. And, uh, and I don't mean role players, something disrespectful. I love role players. Xander Johnson, he gets the best matchup a lot of times defensively. Mm -hmm. A lot of times when you're doing your thing offensively and people are pressing you, he's in the middle of the offense and he's kicking it out to shooters. What a fine young player he is. Yeah, Xander has really come on. He's made himself a basketball player. Uh, he works as hard as anybody. Uh, like you said, he draws the, uh, the defensive assignment against typically uh, teams, you know, top tier players, rebounds the basketball, shoots the three. Uh, and finishes around the basket, and uh, and he's a competitor, a true competitor. And so he's one that is very, very valuable to us. Um, and so, uh, you know, we would not have had the success we've had so far without Xander. Coach Wilkins, talk about your team a little bit. Uh, and it won't be tonight, and it wasn't last time, but in some games, y'all faced the slowdown game a little bit, yeah. which uh, – if you can get outside the district and get in the region and further, that, that goes away a little bit, and you may not mind as much. Right, right. But talk about how your teams had to adjust a little bit because of that. Yeah, I mean, I think that that's um, kind of – there's no secrets in that, that, you know, sometimes the best ways to not let a Jet Montgomery score 20 points is to not let him get 20 shot attempts. You know, it's not <laughs> rocket science. So, you know, we've had to make the adjustments on that, and our kids are – like I said, just open to it all for it. Just want any advantage we can do to to play our style of basketball. And I think that, you know, maybe if there's a you know flaw with me, a lot of times you kind of get caught up in the scouting reports and you know really thinking about maybe they they don't the other team doesn't do this well, so let's try to do that. But that, it may not fit us. And so just always kind of learning. I feel like I'm still learning this team, even though it's very similar to our last year's team. There's some adjustments. There's some things that are, you know, different kids. We've graduated from different kids. And so, you know, we're just constantly trying to evolve but while staying true to, to who we are and trying to play fast. And, you know, I, I think that's what we were able to do, you know, recently. And we've got to continue to do that. 
coach with your team, kind of like Brown and Davis, uh, we talk about Tylen a lot. We talk about Jed a lot, and we should. But talk about a young man like Dawson Miller. Had a nice game on Tuesday night against Page. Uh, steps up and leads you in scoring. Another offensive threat I know you're happy about. Yeah, Dawson's been playing great. You know, he's been playing a lot of uh, our JV minutes throughout the year, but um, you know, he's he's done so many great things in practice, and so he's earned that those minutes. And, you know, the other night we had to have him. He stepped in, um, you know, and he had some shots, which we know we've seen him be able to do that. But defensively, he was just constantly being in every play. He had a lot of deflections. Um, you know, he, he's just a tough kid. You know, he's unfortunately a, a Kansas fan, so I kind of hold that against him maybe a little bit. But other than that, he goes for a great family, great people, and uh, just really proud of him for having that night the other night. And it just kind of gives us a little flexibility that we need. You had to get your Missouri. Had to. There, yeah, I've been waiting on that one for a while. <laughs> uh, let's look at the district standings. If you look, uh, not that this is totally over, but there's been a little separation in terms of in fours. Franklin, Centennial, Indy, Ravenwood, and then Nowensville, Brentwood, Page, Summit. That doesn't mean that's the way it's going to finish, but that's sort of how it's been separated. Still tight throughout, though, Coach Tiger, and anything can still happen. Yeah, without question. I mean, a lot of basketball ahead of us. Um, and so, and, but, and the thing is, it can definitely change because those the teams that are now currently at the, the bottom four are capable of beating anybody in the top yeah. four. And uh -huh. so it's just... Uh, there could be a lot of movement, um, without question. I don't think we talked about this on air when you guys were last in here. But one of the adjustments we made, and you guys were great. Y'all came together as coaches. We were on a Zoom call, and we had to make decisions. And let's face it, sometimes people make decisions. They're thinking about their own team when they're saying, let's put it here, let's put it there. But there was great compromise in what you wanted to do as a group. You two both, and I loved it the way it worked out, Y'all were both okay with that finishing rival thing. So to let you guys know out there what's going to happen, uh, it's not the last game, but on a Wednesday and Friday, we're going to have Franklin with Centennial home and away, and we're going to have Indy with Summit home and away. Talk about that, how unique it is. It's, I almost think it's uh, – uh, you took some lemons and made some lemonade out of it, Coach Tiger. Oh, well, without question. I'm excited about it. I've kind of thought about this idea over the years anyway. It almost has like a NBA playoff type of yes. thing to it. Uh, so, I mean, it, how fun to be talking Franklin Centennial there for three days, you know, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And so um, I just I think it's neat, and uh, I know it's different. But uh, that's what kind of what makes it fun. And Coach Wilkins, you liked it too. And one of the things that you had mentioned, because a lot of people talk about that scouting, but if we play back to back, it'll make it a little less of an issue. Yeah, you know, I think so. I think we all try to pride ourselves on being helping our teams be as prepared as possible. And so now we we are definitely going to know each other by the time that second game rolls back around. And you know, it just I think it's it is it makes it really a fun atmosphere, whether whatever happens on Wednesday, you got to turn right back around and do it on Friday. We kind of pride ourselves. As, it's such a fast sport about being next play. Let's go next play, next play. Well, literally on Thursday morning, you have to wake back up and say, okay, if we played great, if we played bad, let's go back and, and you know get better and, and turn back around and play another very intense, exciting game on Friday night. Again, we're talking about tonight's WCTV game of the week. It's a 10 for a matchup. Franklin traveling to Independence. Coach Wilkins, how do you reverse that January 10 result? What do you need to do tonight? Yeah, it was not a very good showing for us. I mean, they, they made a lot of shots, but I think we, you know, <laughs> allowed them to make a lot of shots too. They're a great shooting team, but if you let such great shooters just stand there and shoot it, they're going to make it, you know? And so we've got to have some, we got to make them take tough ones. If, if they make them, they're going to make them. But uh, we, we tr I probably try to take away everything and then end up taking away anything. Um, and so, um, you know, Coach Tiger and their staff did a great job of picking us apart a little bit. So we've got to keep them out of the lane and nothing else and really try to slow down their attack because I think they're a really, really talented offensive team. Uh, Christian Brown really did a great job on the boards. When they did miss, he'd find a way to put that back in. You know, so we've just got to go back to being who we are and being solid, keep them out of the lane, win the rebounding battle. When they do miss, that's such a precious, you know, rebound we've got to come up with. And so um, I think that's just kind of us. We've got to be who we are and, and try to keep the tempo high. Coach Tiger, on that night, and Coach Wilkins alluded to this, you guys were 10 for 23 from three, and it was a lot of different people doing yeah. it. How do you make sure that happens again tonight? Well, uh, you know, we would appreciate it if we would get good clean looks. <laughs> that, would be, that would be nice. We've got five guys capable of 
of, of knocking down the three, and I think that's what makes us sometimes tough to guard. And so, but as far as what we need to take care of, uh, defensive rebounding, I always go back to that. It's got to be a thing. They are too talented uh, offensively to give multiple opportunities, uh, and and then we got to make their star guys make tougher shots. I mean, we know they're going to make some, just make them tougher. And, uh, you know, it, it's going to be a great matchup. It's going to be a lot of fun. Gentlemen, looking forward to it. Again, thank you for being here. Looking forward to tonight. Appreciate it. Yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be a lot of fun. Thank you for joining us for the Coaches Show. We'll see you next time.